what we now know is that if we alter the numbers of top ocean predators, that's big fish and sharks, it has far-reaching consequences for the way we tackle climate change. The numbers of those top order predators, they have a cascading effect on the food web and on the ecosystem generally. And all of that ends up changing the amount of carbon that is locked into the seabed. So the thing about these coastal wetlands, the, the reason that they are so effective at locking up the carbon long term is because they're constantly burying the carbon in the mud, in the soil. And that's building up, even with sea level rise. So it's not just locked up for tens of years, but hundreds, even thousands of years. In, in environments such as this in the mangroves, for example, if we change the abundances of higher order predators, then that affects the numbers of the small animals that live in the mud in the mangroves. And that has flow on consequences for the amount of carbon that's stored in the soils. Yeah, so just at the moment it's very topical about sharks because of the interactions with humans, but we're talking more than that, we're really talking predatory fish more generally. And they've been harvested for quite a while, generally near where there are big population centres, but as people have faster boats and, and like to go fishing further afield, then potentially all the oceans of the world are affected. So we're already aware of the need to manage the way that we, we take fish and where we take them, and that includes sharks. What we've added in here is a line that says, well, all of those things that we're already doing, and that can be marine reserves or, or caps on the effort, the fishing effort, they all ultimately, now we know, affect the rate at which carbon is stored in the marine sediments. So, so it turns out that these, this, this narrow fringing coastal wetland around the edge of the continents is doing a, a power of good for taking carbon out of the atmosphere and storing it very long term in the soil. We're talking uh, in, in, the, in the range of quarter of a trillion kilograms of carbon per year going on uh, every year so long as we don't fiddle with the system. The sort of dollar value on that you're in the billions around the world every year, probably five billion. That depends very much on which carbon price we use. Australia doesn't have one currently, but if we use the last known one, that's the sort of money we're talking about. Every year, ongoing, forever. The, the, there's no doubt that it's topical now whether, whether sharks are uh, good to have in the environment. Well, we all know they are in one sense environmentally, but obviously that's affecting people's lives. And as we look back and forth in that debate and, and toss it around in the pubs of Australia and beyond, so we now add in another strand of knowledge, which is that as we alter those numbers of predators, so the, the flow on effect is affecting how much carbon we're pulling out of the atmosphere every year and on into the future.